بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Okay, the next thing we'll talk about the configuration part of the OSPF. Again, uh, we'll be configuring in two different uh, labs, like one will be using the same area. Because here we did not discuss any concept like areas, probably that is something we'll be covering in the coming sections. So the configuration syntax, you can see here, this is the syntax, how it goes. So the first step is we need to go to the configuration mode. So we need to say config mode and then we need to go inside the router mode. Let's let me quickly go to the configuration here. So router OSPF. So when I say router, and then we need to select which protocol we are we want to use for advertising your networks. So here I'm going to use OSPF protocol here. So we say router OSPF, and that's not sufficient. If you use question mark, you can see there is something called process ID we need to define. And that number can be anything in between 1 to 65,535. So first, let's try to understand what is process ID here. The process ID is a number which identifies the OSP of process running on that router. And this is especially required when you are running multiple instances of OSP of process when you are running on the same router. We need to differentiate. Like if you take an example, like uh, when we get into some of the MPLS, uh, when you get into some MPLS topics or service borders, so generally this is like a service border. And the service border will have plenty of routers connected, like especially let's say MPLS technology. So there will be one border router. So technically we call this as a PE router, provider edge. And this router will be connecting to multiple customers. Like let's say, it is connecting to customer A as well as connecting to customer B and connect to customer C. And we'll be running some kind of routing between the between these two routers. Like we'll be running OSP of between this router A, the customer, and the service border. And you might be running a separate OSP of between the customer B as well as the service border. And maybe you also run a separate OSP of here. Of course, there is a concept of VRF and other things. So I'm not getting into that to separate the routing tables. But again, uh, what happens here is, which means now this provider edge router, the service product router, this is actually running three OSPFs. One OSPF, it is running for customer A, and another OSPF, it is running for customer B, and let's say it is running another OSPF for customer C. So this is what a single router, if you remember in the initial uh, router ID concepts, I said uh, multiple instances of OSP of running on the same router. Like this is the example. So this router is running three separate OSP of instances or three separate OSPFs, one for each customer. So I can just go and say router OSP of, let's assume we don't have a router ID or if you're using just one instance then probably the problem is whatever the routes coming from the customer A, it will be advertised to the service border. And that service border may end up advertising these routes back to another OSP of neighbor. Because as per this, normally these are the neighbors, right? Just like the router one sends an update to router two, and the router two sends to router three because this is also running OSP of, this is also running OSP of. Now the same thing is happening here. The A is sending the updates to service border. Service border is sending to B. So, but the but the difference is this is separate OSPF. This is separate OSPF here in terms of service border. So the same thing here. Now the service border is actually running OSPF, but these three OSPFs are different. They are not the same OSPF, or they are not the OSPF running for the same customer. Okay. So you need to differentiate this. So the service product is going to run OSPF on this router, the PE, let's say, and that is differentiated based on the process ID. So we can use any number, like I'll be using OSP of one for customer A, and OSP of two for the customer B, and OSP of three for the customer C. Which means on this router, I'm running three separate OSPF instances, and by default, whatever the routes received by the router on the OSP of one, will not go to two and three because they are logically separated. So logically I'm running three separate instances of OSPF. 
So that is the main purpose why they have given this process ID in the last. Okay. So process ID can be any number in between 1 to 65,535. But generally uh, more common, you see multiple instances running more common in the service product scenarios. Of course, on the customer side, you don't run multiple instances of OSPF. That is a little bit rare. But in order to differentiate or to have multiple OSPF instances running on single router, we use a separate process IDs. So you can use any number. So which means in my example, as per my example, I'll be using a simple process ID. Any, any process ID, like I, I prefer to use one. I'm using one, let's say, here. Okay, so this is the first line. So once we give this process ID, like here, any number you can use, I can, I can also give 10 if you want. But when you say 10, if you verify show run, show running config, you can see there is OSP of one separate and OSP of 10 separate. So there will be separate routing instances. Of course, it depends what networks you advertise that will again differentiate. Now, once we define the process ID, now once I give this process ID, let's say OSP of 10, and now inside the router mode, now we need to advertise the networks. Now, to configure the OSP, we need to advertise, means we need to tell which networks you have. Like in, just like in other dynamic protocols, you have to advertise your own networks, and the router 2 will advertise his own advertised networks means in my example on the router one i got two networks i need to advertise these two networks and on the router two you have these two networks we need to advertise these two networks okay so that's what again this information will be added inside the database in the form of lss and then the router calculates the best route but you need to tell what networks you have so the ospf will not automatically come to know that so in my example like this is just a rough example i'm showing you Let's say on the router 2, I'm configuring. So I need to send network. So the first we need to send network. And what is the network number? Network number means nothing but network ID. Like in this example, I'm advertising this network. And what is the network ID? 192.168.2.0. Right? Network ID, remember? Network ID represents the complete network. So we have to give the network ID because this address represents the entire network. So don't give this IP, okay? So not this IP, we have to give the network ID. And that is 192.168.2.0, the first IP of the range. So we have to tell the network ID. So don't write IP address. It should be the network ID, again, I'm saying. And that's not enough. So once you give the network ID, the next step is we need to define the wildcard bits. 